Let's get some more thoughts, a bit more insight now on Osama bin Laden's death and talk to Anthony Weil. He's founder and chief editor of the political website, thedailybell.com. He's on the line from uh, Zurich tonight. Thanks for being on RT. As you see it, has the world become a safer place than now that Osama bin Laden's dead? No, I, I, I don't believe so at all. Um, I, I would find it very difficult to think that Osama bin Laden's death um, has anything to do with the world being a, a safer place or not at this moment in time. As long as we have a fundamentalist uh, driven type of philosophy that is being implemented from within the chambers of the city of London uh, and anchored in uh, under the cloak of Western uh, style democracy, uh, then no, I don't believe uh, you're going to continue to see anything more than uh, types of conflicts we see today being fermented in the Middle East and throughout the, uh, the North African states. It is all about uh, a consolidation of power and readying those nation states that uh, have been resistant or whose leaders may be resistant to a globalist uh, uh, governance uh, which would be administered by the UN along with a global uh, monetary structure which would be administered by the IMF and the World Bank. So I don't believe the world's any safer with bin Laden here or gone. That does not speak to the character of the man by the way. That is not an assessment of whether he was a good person or a bad person. Mm. Clearly he had some issues. I absolutely take it. That's your take on the, on the situation. Okay, but uh, let's just look at what happened over the last 48 hours or so. The US says that Pakistani cooperation helped lead to bin Laden and, and his hideout, but you know, according to the latest WikiLeak, um, Pakistan intelligence was aware of his whereabouts for years. So those two stories don't kind of tally up, do they? No, they don't tally up, and uh, I'm not sure what the divergence of the two stories is for. However, I would say that within Pakistan, uh, it certainly may be uh, fortuitous if the uh, if the if the local people were to believe that, uh, in some way, shape, or form, the ISI was uh, maybe a little bit less than uh, forthright in attempting to, uh, you know, uh, take Osama bin Laden down from this supposed mansion in which he was residing. Whether you believe that to be the case or not, um, of course, the U.S. would like everybody to believe on their side of the water. That, uh, that there, is, uh, there are friends in these other countries who are willing to help them to put forth uh, you know, the types of efforts that they're doing to instill democracy around the world and to uh, bring to justice those who they believe are, are the biggest uh, oppressors to uh, their ability to do that. Well, following on from uh, my question at the top of this interview, given what you know about al-Qaeda, should Americans and the rest of the world be concerned about potential retaliation now? Is it likely? Is retaliation likely? Well, you know, I, I would suggest that uh, retaliation uh, in, in the context of the great conversation that we that we started this program with is likely because of the fact that people out there are resistant, um, much like they were during the era of the Gutenberg press, to forceful um, uh, intrusions into their backyards to make them believe in whatever the concept or the philosophy was that was being imposed. And that's what we're dealing with today. And the Internet Reformation, as I refer to it, is, is no different. And uh, people out there around the world, not only in these countries, where the U.S. Uh, military industrial complex is busily going to uh, spread their democracy, but also within the U.S. itself are resistant to this sort of pressure. So I would suspect that retaliation will continue. I, people in America are less safe tonight than they were before. That's what I'm getting at, yeah? Uh, would they be less safe than they were before? I think they should be more concerned with their own uh, government uh, and the and the uh, growing authoritarianism uh, which is which is mounting within the U.S. And maybe that would be something that, uh, that you know the soft police state that's being imposed through these gradual uh, concessions that are being given up to this uh, uh, this, uh, this 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 organization that is in control of the U.S. government. Uh, I would think that's something that would probably be a more of a concerned threat if I was living in the United States today. For me, anyway. What's the knock-on effect going to be to the ongoing? Going a NATO campaign fighting Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. Are we likely to see uh, a, a pullout quicker now? I, I do not think so at all. I believe that the, uh, the, 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 the forces that are on the ground, these globalist forces that have an intent on bringing in line the various nation states that need to be molded together in order to create a globalist government, uh, I believe that they will continue those efforts and whatever it takes, force or propaganda through mainstream Western media sources, which is continually trying to do their job as well on, these, on the ground, and the subversive uh, activities of the CIA via movements like the Alliance for Youth movements, I believe all of this will continue. And whether or not the uh, subversive attempts will work uh, or whether or not the mainstream media mind manipulation will work, who's to say? But certainly NATO will continue to do and the U.S. as the bad boy enforcers for the city of London will continue to do their job as best they can. A lot of different takes on the story here. Anthony Vile, thank you for telling us about yours. Founder and uh, chief editor of political website, thedailybell.com.